So I'm asking a follow-up question. This goes to you, Rep. Steve Sears, since you uh, are chair of the Finance Committee and have worked on the budget probably <coughs> more extensively than others uh, on the floor. In your answer, you talked about funding, having enough money. We continue to read in the media there isn't enough money. We've pretty well drained the rainy day fund. We've uh, had a fiscal emergency that I recall three different in, in the state, so where where's the money? Why isn't it where we think it is, and, and where did it go? Hey, Shay, that's a great question, and I'm not going to go on for 15 minutes, but I really am going to give you a very quick a synopsis and an overview. You need to remember there are five revenue streams that, that uh, runs this great state and pays our bills. It's the income tax collections, it's sales tax, it's gross production, it's motor vehicle, and other. Other is every non-appropriated state agency has to pay 10% of their monies that they collect into the, the general revenues. It always runs about 60 to $70 million. That's the low one in regards to those five revenue streams. But those are the five revenue streams that runs <clears throat> the state of Oklahoma. The biggest one being the income tax um, line, which you need to know is a well over, close to $4 billion. Now, saying that, there's going to be a question later on about, the, you know, roll back the tax increases and, or the tax, income tax reductions that we've had, but you need to know, every year we reduce the income tax rate, we picked up more money in our state budget. You will have people and you will read that it's cost us a billion dollars and we lost a billion dollars. Nothing could be further from the truth. This isn't a Republican talking point. It's it, literally the tax commission will give you this information. We picked up the, we picked up the billion dollars plus we picked up additional monies to the tune of two hundred and fifty million dollars. But here comes the perfect storm. When we dropped it from five point two five to five, the perfect storm hit. The bottom fell out of the energy market. We had in close to thirteen to fifteen thousand people that were laid off of the industry and related to the oil industry. And that immediately hit the income tax line, and those income tax receipts did not come into the state, nor did the, the sales tax receipts dropped. And also at the same time, <clears throat> the uh, gross production, that number dropped. So right there, the money's coming in. That pool started getting extremely low. Now you also need to know we have an issue in Oklahoma that quite frankly we have created. They're all good plans, but let me walk you through that. When you hear us talk about apportionments off the top, that's a very, very key thing. You'll use some buzzwords here that you hear at the federal level. That's the lockbox money. That's money that's just committed. It's just like you you may be set up in your own household where you, you get paid on a Monday, and by Tuesday the bank draft goes and pays the house payment. In other words, an automatic draw from your account. Same concept. We have so many of those, those coming off the top, and then when we pay all when we pay those particular uh, funds, at the end of the day, we don't have enough money down here to help run state government. And at the same time, our tax credits are completely out of control. Representative uh, Dunlap alluded to that. Now, you need to know, this delegation up here, we have been tenacious in regards to reducing those tax credits. But that, let me tell you something, once those things get alive, it is almost impossible to roll one of them, roll one of them back and to have reform. And we'll talk more about that. But you have those three things going on, and it's a perfect storm. The tax cut that we put in place cost $147 million. I had numerous people say, just roll that back and put that money back into the account, into the budget. Well, that's a fair statement. You could have done that, but you still would have been short last year $1.2 billion. And there lies the problem, and that's the issue that we're dealing with right now, and we must absolutely correct this. And that's where all of our energies are this year. <clears throat> We've been doing it for several years. I put together the budget last year, and I tried to put some uh, rep tax revenue measures in place. They didn't go because the members did not want to vote for a tax increase. So we're either going to have to roll back, reform the tax credits, do something with reform on apportionments off the top, or we're going to have to come up with some revenue measures. We have three of them on the floor. The representative mentioned once. There's three of them that really has a, a lot of life and a lot of discussion at the Capitol, one of them being increase uh, uh, taxes on cigarettes. The other one is uh, increase gasoline tax. Well, let me stop there back up. The, the, gas, the cigarette tax would bring in about $220 million. 
The gasoline tax would bring in about $230 million. And then the representative talked about if we do away with itemized deduction, we bring in $230 million. And there is some talk in regards to visiting the, the gross production apportionments that we have in the state. That's just talk right now. But there lies our issue in regards to when these monies come off the top, tax credits, and with this downturn in the, in the economy, not the economy, the energy sector, it was just a perfect storm. And that's the reason why we don't have the monies that we have. We still have to run state government. The, the fight the journey that we're on, you know, I don't want to hear this today, but this is the budget we're trying to put together in the House, is to keep education flat once again this year, and plus make it a priority to do the teacher pay raise. I'm telling you right now, we do not have additional funds to put back in, or more additional funds to put in education this year, until we correct some of these other problems. Let me, I'll close with this. Let me tell you about these apportionments off the top. Every one of them are good apportionments. Our county commissioner sitting right here, Commissioner Dunlap, about $490 million comes right off the top, goes to county government. Um, $540 million comes right off the top, goes to uh, transportation to fund the eight-year plan. And, um, and the OLAP, which is $70 million right off the top to help our students uh, uh, pay for their tuition, low-income families. And then the other one is the 1017 funds or education. You have six funds that come right off the top. And if we, if we reform those, we take money away from them. That hurts public education. So we're working on all this, having good, thorough, deep conversations in regards to coming up with a good balance to make sure that we can stop this ongoing, where we just money going out, we don't have any money to help us to increase it to our state programs.